Hi, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door, and this is an on the road episode with Nature at Your Door. I'm in New York State right now in Cornwall on a pond in the community, and I was walking down here and I saw this brilliant, brilliant, bright yellow tree and knew right away that that had to be a ginkgo biloba. Most people know ginkgo tree as one of the leading herbal supplements in both Europe and North America that's come originally from China and has a long tradition in Chinese medicine. But this tree, I want to talk about its amazing history. It's been around for millions of years and it is one of the most resilient trees in the world and I'll explain why. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. So let's take a dive into the background of this amazing tree. The ginkgo that you can see behind me with its saffron yellow leaves, just spectacular in the fall, is actually a lone survivor of its kind. No relatives, no cousins, it is by itself in its category with no other plant in the world anything like it. Its lineage can be traced back 260 million years, and its fossils from 100 million years ago look exactly like the leaves and bark of the tree today. This places the ginkgo well back into the Triassic period, with dinosaurs like T. rex might have taken cover in the shade of this tree. Diplodocus might have ate its leaves. For these reasons, ginkgo biloba may be known as a fossil relic or a living fossil. This tree is the sole survivor of its taxonomic group. It's very likely that all the trees that you can find in North America and Europe all come from a common ancestor that came from a monastery in China. The monks about a thousand years ago recognized the medicinal properties and the uniqueness and the rareness of this tree and took care of them and cultivated them in their monasteries. There are monasteries in China with thousand plus year old trees in them. We're not even really sure if any trees exist in the wild any longer. They have found a few isolated groups seemingly growing wild in the mountains in China, but it's possible that these are only there as remnants from other monasteries or other cultivation by monks in China as well. The longevity of the ginkgo trees is debated, but they believe the Lin Zhuan Grand Ginkgo in China is over 4,000 years old. In Japan, there's six amazing ginkgo trees. These were trees that were living in 1945, just a kilometer from ground zero. And all of them were scorched and their leaves blown and torched off. And in a very short period of time, they began to recover and produce leaves. These amazing trees demonstrated the resilience of life and they're known as survivor trees and they're alive today. The ginkgo became a symbol of hope and endurance and peace. These ginkgo trees are truly resilient and today their resilience is recognized for their ability to grow in urban environments. Ginkgo trees can grow in these tough city environments where native trees would not be likely to survive. They seem to thrive in the face of car exhaust, industrial releases, and concrete and asphalt. They can withstand the heavy city pollution and highs and low temperatures that come with the environment along with uh, drenching rains and summertime droughts. Their root systems can thrive below concrete and asphalt of the sidewalks and streets. Their disease and insect resistance 
make them an ideal tree to plant in urban environments where our native trees would be so stressed and would eventually succumb to all these different elements, disease, and insects. Their autumn beauty, like the tree that you can see behind me here at sunset, is unsurpassed. A close look at these leaves reveals unique form and structure. Another name for the ginkgo tree is the maidenhair tree. The leaves of other trees are characterized by veins that branch out from one or more central veins. But on the ginkgo, they seem to be parallel with no central vein. If you look at these leaves very closely, you'll see that the veins will eventually branch into two. And these are called dichotomous venation, while all the veins of the leaf seem to be uh, almost parallel to each other with no major vein dominating anywhere. Now a word of caution before you run out and buy a ginkgo. A couple things to remember. One, ginkgos have male and female trees. And the female trees produce a fruit-like structure with a seed in it that is so foul smelling. They produce copious amounts of these fruit-like structures that fall on the ground. They're slimy and they're said to smell like human vomit. So if you get a ginkgo tree, be sure it's not a female. The other thing is I always promote native plantings. And for example, an oak tree would be a much better choice to plant because it's native and it's home to literally probably 2,000 different species of organisms are known to live in or live on oak trees. Now ginkgo being a non-native, it's not eaten by any insects, it's not a host to anything, it's not a home for anything, but that's exactly why it makes it so resistant. So the tree should really only be planted in environments where a native tree wouldn't survive, but you want to have the same advantages of cooling and transpiration and shade and carbon dioxide uptake, just like regular trees. And a final interesting note, you can see that the tree behind me is full of leaves. It's barely dropped any leaves at all. And when the temperatures here drop below 32 and get a good hard freeze, all these leaves will fall off practically at the same time, creating a beautiful yellow carpet on the ground. That needs to be raked up. I hope you enjoyed this episode about this amazing tree that survived 260 million years. It survived two extinctions. It survived multiple ice ages. It survived the drifting apart of the, con the continents and all these different environments and bugs and insects, and it's still here today. What an amazing tree. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode about this remarkable and resilient tree that's withstood the test of time and it's just an amazing, amazing tree. Remember, if you like what I do on this channel, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.